Okay, so in this week's Ask the Expert, we've got with us Kirsty Thomas and Dan Batchelor from Foresight. Um, and basically, in the usual style, what we want to do is try and find out a bit more about what Foresight are doing. Um, and also, um, yeah, obviously have a, have a bit of an intro because um, I you know both of them have, have got sort of a small story to tell, if you like. Um, so if we start with you, Kirsty, could you just sort of introduce yourself and just tell us uh, sort of what you do and yeah, how, what, <laughs> what your role is there? <laughs> yeah. Hi, um, yes, I'm Kirsty Thomas. I'm the services manager at Foresight Vision Support. Um, we've, there's, there's, there's so much we have been doing and there's so much we, we are currently doing that uh, it's difficult to know where to start. But um, I suppose we can start with what we did through, through, the, through the pandemic. Um, we didn't close our doors. We were on the phones um, calling all of our, all of our clients. Um, we did some some great stuff over the phone, which we which we never thought we would be able to do. I think when uh, we all first went into lockdown, and um, it just showed that just by calling people, making welfare calls, we 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 actually made about five thousand contacts in those first sort of few months, which was wow. phenomenal. Um, the 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 things that we sort of we do, we learned a lot from that. We learned a lot about delivering a person centred one to one specific support. Um, and we've got some new sort of future service uh, future services plan which, which came out of that. So, so we're sort of stopping the kind of like trying to do a little bit of everything everywhere. We wanted to make things really specific and our waiting list kind of directed that. So we still have um, a very, very large uh, list of people waiting for a low vision assessment. For, for magnifiers and to see what other support we can provide um so that we've been we've been doing part of that already obviously but we, we have got still what building low vision assessment waiting list which um <laughs> is huge um but the accessible technology service that we uh, that we ran and actually um reintroduced with dan uh, back in july um which was highlighted really quite strongly through the pandemic that the accessible technology you know, being, people being able to access technology to communicate, do all kinds of things. We, we know now that how, how important that is. So, yeah, I'll let Dan talk a little bit more about that. But we've also been running virtual groups. Um, those groups are still running, which have been, you know, in, in the most part, really successful. Um, we've also set up some activities over the summer to get people sort of out and about again. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of things happening. We, we turn 100 uh, this year. So, yeah, it's, it's wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. No, that's good. I, don't, I think that's one of the things that so many organisations sort of realised, and, and probably also sort of individuals, as you've said there, there's certainly, we've experienced that, there's things where you would do things remotely that you wouldn't have thought would be possible, and then kind of when your hand is forced, you realise kind of like the, the benefits of it, but also I think um, particularly sort of in the sort of older, the, the senior kind of population, I think there was always this thought technology or at least this kind of thing like video and um yeah even if they were aware of assistive technology there may have been uh, sort of assumptions that that's sort of a young person's game and that's yeah not for them um but i think yeah with people spending time sort of on their own in isolation and so on and, and like say probably having those one-on-one -on -one calls with people you start to realize the benefits of yeah the technology that's out there um so yeah so dan tell us a, tell us what your role is and sort of what you're doing there Yes, definitely. So I've, I've just recently rejoined the organisation, as Kirsty said, at the start of July, and I've been employed as Foresight Vision Support's uh, Accessible Technology Specialist. Uh, so my role is to sort of deliver uh, that remote training um, as well as face-to-face -face training to our beneficiaries, just to help them get what they want from, from technology. Um, as we've already hinted at, over the last 15, 16 months, I think the primary need has been for communication. So whether that's things like Boom, Teams, Skype, whatever it may be, I think it's technology has proved invaluable as, as that communication channel between between individuals that are maybe shielding at home, um, just to stay in contact with their loved ones, wherever they may be, whether it's down the road, whether it's the other side of the world. Um, also, like the everyday necessities as well, like online shopping, um, obviously banking to a certain degree, and also leisure, things like talking books. And as we've already hinted at, what... Two years ago, um, when I was when I was at the charity previously, I would never have considered um, the, or even yeah, even considered doing anything remotely. That traditional face-to-face -face method, where we all feel that's what's going to be the best for the person. But working remotely, yes, it can be challenging. But I think 
the pros definitely outweigh the cons. The fact that you can sort of break break things down for people so you give them little bite-sized chunks to digest, have one 45-minute call one week, another call the other week. Um, and it just it, it takes away that tendency when you're side by side with someone. We do it with the best interest at heart, but if someone's struggling, you're going to step in and help them. When you're doing it remotely, it's on that individual to to put the work in, to have that need, that determination, which a lot of the beneficiaries that we support have. Obviously, all for different needs, but it's it takes a bit longer. But I think, as I said, I think it's more beneficial for, for our beneficiaries than those traditional methods. As Kirsty hinted at, um, we're still running. We we used to run four face-to-face -face sort of technology peer groups around the county. Um, the fact that that now has sort of become virtual, we're connecting people that never have, would have spoke, would never have met, and just that knowledge sharing. For me, I'm a big, I'm a big, ad, big advocate, sorry, for the peer-to-peer -peer support. It's one thing having people like myself that can share knowledge, help boost confidence in individuals to get them where they want to be. But I think people get a lot more from seeing someone in a similar situation, overcoming those barriers and succeeding. Um, so yes, it's it's nice coming back into the organisation as well to, to sort of be able to hit the ground running. Um, so yeah, we've got a, Kirsty hinted at the waiting list. We're, we're working through those bit by bit, low vision and accessible technology, I think for us has been the, the most highlighted need. Um, so we're just, we're, we're currently working our way through those and, and doing what we can just to share that knowledge, encourage people to, to be on their way with technology and get to where they want to get to. Yeah, I think that's the thing because there's also a lot to be said. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk at the moment sort of in the mainstream media about people working from home. But like you've just said there, to support somebody kind of over the phone, it's on the one hand, like I say, it's, it's probably a little bit more challenging, but also the fact that the person's in their own home, they maybe feel a bit more comfortable and uh, unwittingly might say things that they wouldn't say while they're sort of in a yeah well-lit resource centre and so on um, and I think that's the thing it's I think also like you just said that I think key thing really has been communication but also that thing of sort of independent living as now restrictions have kind of eased um, yeah people can start to go out more um, and I think that's the thing having the right uh, sort of technology that they can use when they're out and about again it probably you know this this whole like the communication through video technology or just over the phone or whatever it, i think it probably would have been seen as just just kind of too much i mean it kind of makes you wonder a little bit had the pandemic not happened um yeah how long it might have taken some of the people uh so like say particularly the seniors to sort of catch up with this kind of thing so i like to think that i've got a positive outlook on things and i think it's it's really had yeah a good impact on uh, people's awareness of yeah technology kind of what's out there um and yeah maybe you know if people have used things started to use things like tablets and so on they may be connected through social media so they start to become more exposed to yeah i don't know groups and like i said there connecting with people that maybe they wouldn't have done before um but it's nice to see or nice to hear should i say that yeah you've got people coming back in so you have to forgive me because i haven't been down there in, in yeah quite a long time so you've got like a like a resource room where people could come and sit down and have a chat with you and show you different bits and pieces is that right yeah that, that's right so we are working on an appointment basis only so we haven't opened our doors to to uh, you know to just to sort of say come in and drop in we actually have found that by by sort of continuing with an appointment basis only we can provide a much better service to people it sort of takes away that you know if 10 people arrive at the same time one person gets you know really good service and actually that'll do that do the next nine get that same level of service so we are we, we're being sort of quite um sort of what we don't feel it's restricting we just feel that people get much more from us if um they can make an appointment so the centers are open but on an appointment only basis yeah yeah that makes sense i think i think also just from like a personal point of view i mean i've had this conversation with so many people but it's things like going to the barbers and stuff like that where um normally i would just queue in for yeah like an hour or an hour and a half and to be able to book an appointment it makes such a difference and i can only imagine it being sort of pun intended kind of magnified when you're in this sort of situation where you're actually you are looking for help and you're not sure what's out there like i said you can allocate that specific amount of time and, and have a chat with them and yeah if necessary again it's not probably in the past it may have been if you'd implemented something like this 
um, you would have had that time, but then maybe the option to support them over the phone or say via video wouldn't have been an option. Whereas if, they're, if the person's already familiar with it and they talk to you, have a think about it, they can call back and speak to Dan and say, oh yeah, you know, you showed me this, Dan, you know, you, you showed me that it can help with the internet, but what about things like, I don't know, email, there might not be that connection. <laughs> and they may have heard like family members talk about it and at least then you can, yeah, you can add to it then. Um, so no, that's good. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. Okay. Sorry, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> you can talk about your smarter way of working. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so it's. Um, I think we where we used to operate sort of a drop-in service. You, we could have, as Kirsty said, you could have one person come in. You're sitting down with that person, and you get another five um, come in 10, 15 minutes later. And obviously, you don't want to keep people waiting. So you're trying to you're trying to do the best you can. But I think sort of it works. This remote way of working, again, two years ago, we wouldn't have considered this. I wouldn't have thought that it could prove successful. Um, but I just think the fact that we can dedicate that time to someone over a period of time, whether it's five, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever's needed for that person to get to what they where they want to be. For I think with technology, what I've found um, over the last 15, 16 months is that there's two aspects of it. There's the knowledge that someone needs to propel them forward, but they also need the confidence. And you need you need both of those to grow side by side. Otherwise, something's gonna something's gonna fall away uh, at some point. And I think really what what I've been doing with our beneficiaries it's it's not necessarily teaching them how to email or teaching them how to use Facebook, but you're giving them those those basic navigation skills, whether that's with magnification, whether that's with screen readers, and that's really what. When that's what's needed to get someone, Every, everything else is a case of familiarity. Um, obviously, whenever something's new to someone, it takes us time to, to get used to it. But that's whether that's, whether that's jumping on a bicycle for the first time, no one does that and cycles off, you have to fall off. And it's the same with technology. Um, it's just about exposing yourself to it um, for long enough for it to sink in and sort of become second nature. Um, as I said, I, I've been referring to this with, uh, with Kirsty, I'm, I'm trying to implement it with the technology, but I think as an organisation, the pandemic has allowed us to maybe re, uh, re, rethink the way that we deliver our services moving forward. And as much as we want to do things face to face, I think doing it remotely, you can sort of lay some foundations building up to a point where you can, where you can see someone face to face, whether that's in one of our centres within their own homes. But by the time you get to that point, we know what the need is how we can help it rather than just turning up on someone's doorstep, trying to identify what their need is, trying to address that need in one go. And in many ways, when we used to do that before, you walk away and unfortunately it may have done more harm than good because you've just bombarded a person with so much information, they, they can't take it in. Um, so I'd like to think that this sort of slower way of working where you just sort of, you're laying some foundations before you get to that face-to-face -face intervention, by the time you get there, you've got a, I've got a clear understanding as to what, what I need to do to help that beneficiary. And hopefully for them as well, it's just the, the time scale has enabled them to digest it, practice, implement things, try new things. And that's, for me, that's what's going to propel them forward. Um, yeah. it's, it is surprising how successful it can be. And as I said, a couple of years back, I, I know we're not the only organisation doing it in this way now, but... I, I suppose most sight loss charities wouldn't even consider doing things remotely, whether that's over the phone, uh, FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, Teams, whatever it may be. Um, but yes, it is. It's. I think there's so much value in it, and this will this will be something that we deliver moving forward alongside our face to face services as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, one one hundred percent. And then just to add to that as well, I mean, it's just, it's the same sort of thing for the low vision assessment service, where we had conversations over the phone. We've tried different magnifiers. We've looked at what you know. We, we've pulled our information, whether it's accessing visual acuities, whether it's just sort of getting them to describe what they can and can't read. Um, we were able to do some of that successfully over the phone. Um, but the reason we have such a long waiting list, we know that's not always perfect. So. Yeah, sometimes it's actually physically being in a room for, to provide a low vision assessment, you know, is, is the only way to, to achieve that. Um, but like Dan says, you know, we have that opportunity to, to identify some things and, and have, you know, have, and make some quick fixes, which was, which, again, we never thought we could have done over the phone. So, yes, it's been really positive. 
Yes, well, it's, uh, it's, it's also interesting that you mentioned before that um, you're obviously you're turning 100 this year, which is obviously a huge milestone. And when you consider, I mean, it's probably not the obvious, but when you consider what would have been offered 100 years ago compared to now, obviously it's night and day. But to be honest, even sort of, I would imagine, based on what you're telling me now, um, so sort of even the last couple of years, the changes that people are making, I think everybody's become a bit more more sort of flexible because. Um, yeah, we, we're very much the same. So we're a technology company, but everything that we're doing now would never have been, I don't even think, well, I'd like to think I maybe would have thought about it at some point, but that's the thing, even as a technology company, we've always done things the way that we have and it's kind of worked. So why would you ever change? But it does, I did think um, sort of over the past month or two, it makes you wonder, can, can we think forward? Are there any other things that, so we don't have to rely on a, a pandemic, are there other things that we can implement that will make a difference? Um, so yeah, no, I, th I think you're going in the right direction. So going back to the, uh, yeah, centenary as it were, have you, have you got anything sort of in the pipeline at the moment that you're looking to introduce or anything that you could share with us? Give us a, an exclusive on, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we talked about the future services plan and our fundraising team are working really hard um, to try and sort of make that, make that a reality. So again, it's, it's very much focused on the individual and providing more of an advocacy style service where someone comes to us, if they really just want that low vision assessment, that's what they will get. But we often know that there are many more sort of, you know, needs uh, that, it, that we just don't see until that low vision assessment happens. So we're trying to sort of um, incorporate much more person-centered one-to-one -one support um, for everyone of every age across West Sussex. So it doesn't matter if you're five or 55 or 105, you know, you will get a service that's relevant to you. So that, that's our dream for the future. And we're already sort of, you know, making some steps towards that. Um, and uh, we've been engaging with our, our, our beneficiaries to make sure that we are doing, you know, the right thing. We've heard a lot of things about, you know, we can build up confidence. So the Rovi, the rehabilitation officers can do mobility training, but actually there's that extra step that we need to be doing and providing some sort of um, sighted guide, you know, whether it's through volunteers, however that works, just to, just to enable people to really build their confidence getting out and about again. So yeah, there's lots of things happening. And um, the, you know, the big fundraiser as well for our hundredth. So we're doing, we're having a big one hundredth um, uh, Hollywood ball in October, which is really quite exciting. So, yeah, lots oh, wow, of things wow. happening. So yeah, you'll get an invite. So <laughs> that's <laughs> invite good. Yeah. <laughs> that's excellent. Actually, as in like a Hollywood theme. So or you can have Brad Pitt there. And <laughs> yeah, he's he's my date. Yeah, he's he's coming. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it will it will be. It'll, it's um, it's, it's going to be really exciting. Um, yeah, very. It'll be, I think people just be so excited to be out actually. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's something not to be overlooked, especially with um, sort of sight loss charities that are local to people, the uh, sort of social aspect of it. So, not just specifically sort of on looking, maybe just uh, at specific help that they might need, but just that interaction with other people. And, like you said there, I think we, we've certainly seen it. We've done a few events over the past few weeks. and. Yeah, it seems to be kind of like an, an appetite and an excitement for, for sort of being out there. Um, so again, that silver lining, it seems to kind of like refreshed. Um, yeah, everybody's we, at the weekend, uh, my family and, and a few friends, we went camping and it was amazing. So the vibe at the campsite, it was it was going it's like going back quite a few years kind of thing i think everybody started trying to do new things and i think probably that it's probably a good analogy because there's probably people there that had never sort of camped before or never thought about it obviously yeah it's becoming really popular and i think it's exactly the same with uh, organizations like yourselves where potentially people might have thought oh well i'm not blind or um i'm not you know in, in the sort of denial stage but i think um yeah as the word sort of spreads and especially we always refer to sort of friends, relatives and neighbours um, and with the sort of increased effort from most people on social media. Um, so sharing the news and I know we, we spoke with uh, your social media people as well and, and they're also doing the same sort of thing. And I think reaching that wider audience is uh, just as valuable as, as really probably supporting the beneficiaries that you've got at the moment. So that there's probably plenty of people out there that aren't aware of your services that yeah, we definitely benefit from them in one way or another. Oh, 100%. And, you know, we, we, 
we, we say we're there to support people living with sight loss and that includes family and friends and carers um, because we know that they, you know, for, in some ways, the support, that, that they need just as much support as well, even if it's just understanding what those, those sight, that, what that means for, for the person with sight loss. And um, and we and, and we identify that, and, and we and we we realise how important it is, and so it's about involving everyone. And one of the most one of the greatest things we've seen actually through the pandemic, and the rehabilitation officers have seen this as well, is that family did become much more engaged with uh, their the, you know the family members that have sight loss, the, and and it really sort of helped them to to understand the difficulties as well. So we weren't just supporting. Um, in Mr. Mr. You know, Smith, um, who's 94, we're actually supporting his daughter who was visiting his house to try and help him with his iPad and, and get online shopping. So it was, that, you know, that's been really, really positive, I think. Excellent. 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 That's good. Excellent. Well, um, did we have anything else that you'd want to mention? I don't want to sort of rush to the end. If we, if we covered, I think we've covered quite a bit there. Uh, yeah, the other thing I was going to say is that we, um, do, one of our colleagues, Tara, she is work, um, our vision support coordinator for children, young people and families, actually, and um, she's been doing some fantastic work around education and uh, with, with the help of Dan with, te with technology as well. Um, and so that, that's the service that we want to really sort of shout about. But they also had, we also had a, an, a, an amazing activity day recently as well, where children and their siblings and their families and their parents were all able to get together and they had a really great day out. So yeah, it's, there's, there's lots of things happening and, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's move, I think it's moving in the right direction. No, that's <laughs> good. I think that's something that I'm always a bit guilty of um, when I'm talking to sight loss charities is because I've, I've always just sort of got it in my mind um, about sort of the seniors and the elderly and so on. And talking to a few organisations sort of in the last few weeks, there seems to be quite, um, yeah, sort of like a push or a focus on, yeah, like say children and young people. Um, and I think, yeah, that, yeah, again, it's a good thing. Although they might be familiar with technology, there's probably things that, yeah, again, that you, you're trying that maybe you've not tried before. Um, and I think that's a really good thing. Excellent. Good yeah, stuff. and actually, just in addition to that, for um, so they're, they're, uh, one of the, the biggest things that we have started doing as well is um, we can actually now help people with their personal dependence payments forms. You know, the the, the, the dreaded, uh, really <laughs> really long and inaccessible forms. Um, so we're really proud to be able to say that we can offer that across West Sussex as well. So yeah, lots of different things happening, and then yeah, just yeah, be uh, it's just exciting times. Excellent. I know that can be a pain point for a lot of people. So being able to do that and not have to rely on, yeah, like say maybe the council or somebody that's not necessarily familiar with the, the challenges that they might be facing. It's, um, yeah, it's always a wonder sometimes when you fill in forms or when you're doing things. It, obviously, it's always in the back of my mind. If I was visually impaired, how easy would this be? And it's surprising how many times you come across things. And uh, yeah, it's not always that. Yeah, things haven't been thought through as well as they probably should have done. Um, so yeah, no, that's ace. Excellent. Well, thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and uh, no doubt we will be in touch soon. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Take care. Cheers. No worries. Cheers. Bye.